I like sloths. And um, my question is, how long would it take a sloth to get from one end of a football field to the other? Hey Avery, that's a great question. Now, before I answer that, I will tell you that sloths are faster than people think. And I figure a sloth can move about 10 yards, if we're talking about a football field, in about 30 seconds. So if it's a Canadian football field, that's 110 yards between the end zones, I figured he could probably do that in about six minutes if he was moving at a solid pace. Five to six minutes to get the length of the field, and ideally, we'd wanna have some kind of a rope so he would be crawling along his back, which would be a lot more comfortable than him trying to walk or crawl and pull himself along the ground. But on a branch, probably about five to six minutes. But it's highly unlikely that a sloth would want to move that fast, that far, for any period of time. Great question, though. Hello, my name is Quinn, and, I, and I'm seven, and I want to know what is the biggest shark? Hey, Quinn, great question. Whale sharks are actually the largest species of shark in the world and they get about five and a half to ten meters in length. So we're talking about 18, 19 feet right up to about 33, 34 feet and can weigh upwards of 19,000 kilograms, over 40,000 pounds when they're full growing. That's the biggest shark. Hi, my name is Grace and I'm 14 and I got two questions for you, Lil Ray. How fast do geckos run and how do flying squirrels glide? Grace, that first one's a pretty tough question. I don't know anybody who's actually clocked a gecko. Here's what I can tell you. They tend to move in short spurts, maybe about five to 10 feet at a time and they'll, they'll run and they'll stop and they catch their breath and they run and they'll stop. So I would have to think if I had to guess that some geckos are probably moving at 15 to 20 kilometers an hour for short spurts, but I'm actually gonna look into this a little bit more and maybe put some comments below. It's go time. As for a flying squirrel, how do they actually fly? Another great question. And a lot of people don't realize, Grace, that we're up here in Ottawa, where we're shooting this, and flying squirrels are actually very, very common here, but they're nocturnal, meaning they're come out at night. Most people never see flying squirrels around here, even though they're literally all over the place. And if you ever want to see a flying squirrel, the best thing to do is to put out a bird feeder and put a red light on it at night, and the flying squirrels will actually fly from trees at night over to your bird feeder. You gotta be lucky to see them, but they're super common. And these flying squirrels have webbing that attach from their wrist on their front foot, kind of back to their ankles on each side. And when they jump, they're simply spreading it out, almost forming almost what looks like a glider or parachute, and they're just gliding through the air. That's how they fly. Great questions, Grace. Thanks for asking. Hey, I was wondering, what arachnid has the best eyesight? Hunter, arachnid with best vision. Truthfully, I think I'd have to do some serious research, but what I will tell you is that my favorite type of arachnid in the world, jumping spiders. You can find them all over the place. Teeny, weeny little spiders, big eyes. Their eyes are almost the most prominent thing on their body. Look at my beautiful eyes. Have exceptional vision, and they're called jumping spiders for a reason. They'll sit in areas, they'll kind of jump over onto your hand and stuff even. They seem to be super alert and paying attention. And to catch the prey, they often will jump and catch something in the air, which is kind of crazy. Uh, jumping spiders, I will tell you, they may not have the best vision of any spider, but they have exceptional vision. Hey, Lil Ray, I'm Dylan. I have a question for you. Why is giraffe's pur uh, tongue purple? Why are giraffe's tongues purple? Hey, this is a great question, Dylan. <laughs> Scientists aren't 100% sure on this, but they believe it's actually to protect their tongues from sunburn. They're constantly using that long tongue to grab leaves and stuff. Obviously, they're out in the sun all day. They think it's to protect them from sunburn. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jet from Ottawa, and my question is, how big do dragons get? Hey Jet, dragons! How big do dragons get? Stop, stop, stop. Uh, I'm a dragon. 
Well, the biggest dragon in the world, Jet, are Komodo dragons, an unbelievable lizard. And they probably average about 70 kilograms when they're full growing, a bit over 150 pounds. But there was one Komodo dragon that was over 160 kilograms, more than 360 pounds when it was full growing, making him the biggest dragon on record. Thank you.